I created this realistic render and only if you watch this video all the way through the end, you'll be able to achieve the same quality. So as always, I start off by creating my composition. Over here, I go to my scene and I customize the aspect ratio and the perspective mode. The perspective mode is set to two point perspective. That way all vertical lines are at 90 degrees and the aspect ratio is at 16 by nine. Right after that, I basically go ahead and tweak the field of view a bit. I just tweak the camera angle and get closer to our building here. And then I turn off the auto exposure. Right after that, I'm gonna go to the AI Atmospheric Math, which is a very smart AI tool where I can literally upload a reference image and that will be used as a reference to match the lighting on our scene the same way as it is on the reference image by using AI and only D5 has this feature as of now. Right after I do that, I'm gonna try and rotate the HDRI to try the match the scene even further. And then I am going to move on to modify some of the materials. I go straight to the glass where I make it a bit more translucent and then I go to interior parallax. So interior parallax are basically images which change based on the perspective that you have, which you can put inside the actual house which will mimic as if you have furniture in the interior. And as you can see, I'm doing two, three, uh, I think four of these in each of the floors and each of the rooms. That way you can mimic as if the interior is populated. And right after doing that, I'm putting some rectangular lighting on the interior, which will emit the light to the outside, meaning that it will actually look like uh, there's some warmth coming in from the house. This will work very well since our sky is a bit darker, right? Or I guess a bit grayish. The warm interior lighting coming from the house will work very well in contrast with the sky that we have here. Right after I do that for one of the rooms, I basically just duplicate it to every single one of them and also the second floor. The next steps are what actually make the biggest difference onto the final render. However, if you want to learn realistic rendering in just seven days, I'm actually running a Black Friday offer right now on my D5 render program. In this course, you will learn how to get your render from Minecraft level to realistic in just seven days. You will also get $10,000 worth of exercise files and you will get feedback from a private community of 3D rendering professionals where you will get to improve your work alongside with like-minded people. If this sounds like something that you want to do, make sure that you get advantage of this Black Friday sale by clicking the first link in the description. Uh, after I'm done with the lighting, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the grass material and I'm gonna turn the material template to grass, which automatically changes our grass. Uh, after that, I'm just gonna change the color of it to make it a little bit brighter because it was just way too dark and it was just not looking correct uh, the way I wanted it. So after that, I didn't want to let the actual interior be as visible. So I just made it a bit more specular to reflect a bit more. Then I go to the D5 render asset library and I import uh, the stone material, which basically I'm gonna tweak a little further. I want it a bit lighter, I want it a bit brighter as well, which is gonna look much better. And then I go ahead and put on a beige tint on top of it, which just works perfectly fine with the scheme of colors that we have here, which are still meant to be edited later on. So right here, um, this, I guess, complementary uh, part of the facade is gonna be a bit more beige. And then we want to have the main part of the facade be a bit uh, brighter and lighter as well. So one thing that I'm gonna do after that, which is gonna be the main challenge in this render is gonna be the landscaping because that plays a huge part, as you can see in the final result that we have here. So I basically chose two or three trees and I placed them in different uh, parts of our, uh, I guess, yard here. And then one thing that I did is I changed the sizes between them just to have some randomization uh, between all of them. Then I'm gonna use the brush tool, the brush scatter tool here in D5, and I'm just gonna brush on the outside of the building just to kind of hide the horizon line, and maybe give it more context um, on the surroundings with a bunch of trees and a bit more nature and just um, make it a bit more alive. That's basically what we're trying to achieve here. As you can see now, we are not able to see the horizon line. And then finally, I'm gonna place another tree at the frame here just to help us a little bit with the framing and to kind of help the whole composition of our render here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and find the tile material in the D5 render ass library and I'm gonna place it on our uh, tiles here which are gonna be at the forefront of our render. And then I'm playing around a bit with the exposure, trying to lower it. I'm At this point, I'm not still sure 100% uh, what our lighting is going to be. But one thing for sure is that um, we are far from what I actually need to achieve here as far as lighting goes and the mood of the image, which is what we're working on right now. So 
I'm still trying to rotate these right, uh, still trying to find the perfect angle for the sun to actually hit our render. And uh, this was the trickiest part throughout this whole process, but once we actually get this done, it was actually so, so, so worth it. Right after that, I basically go ahead, I try to apply a beige tint on our tiles as well. Uh, which actually works just fine and then I go ahead and try to add a displacement map just to see a bit um, the 3D look of the actual tiles. Uh, then right after that I'm going to go ahead and import some outdoor furniture which are going to be also at the forefront of our composition and basically after uh, I'm done with that import I can still tell that there's something wrong with the age dry. So I go to polyhaven.com and try to find some external age dries to bring onto our render then uh, by basically just going to the environment tab and looking at customized Azure eyes, uh, I test it out to see if something like this would work fine for us. So basically I'm just trying to test things out and uh, once again, I'm gonna have to go back to the AI atmospheric match just to see another take at it and um, try to see what the final result will be with the AI atmospheric match as well. I'm still unhappy at this point. So I go back and try to rotate it and try to find some warmth because it's just way too great and uh, the actual materials on our uh, building here are not reflecting uh, those tints that the sky should have in my opinion, right? So right after I'm done with that, I'm still just searching for uh, some type of setting that will just fix everything for us, but it seems like it's not a post-processing issue. It has more to do with the age dry and with the balance of the colors. So I go ahead and try to use another age dry, which is a bit even darker, but it has more bluish tints which still I wasn't completely happy with, but one thing that I tried to work with is with ambient inclusion. So basically the ambient inclusion option in DeFi render is very useful and try to um, apply it in every render because the corners of your um, shapes are gonna look much better. It's gonna distribute the lighting so, so much more realistic and the shadows in your render. So right after I'm done with that, I'm trying to add some more irregularities in the landscape, basically some bushes uh, just uh, randomly and then uh, some shrubs as well. And then I will add some rocks and um, I get, I guess, small uh, um, stones, whatever, just around the landscape, just to give it more variety, just to make it feel a bit more regular, just to give it some more imperfections. That way it actually looks a lot more livable than it is looking as of now. Then I go ahead and try to edit the uh, water. I basically use the water template. I try to make the color a bit uh, darker because it was just um, not looking right. And after that, I just did some minor adjustments and I think it helped. Add another tree here at the side. I basically really lower the sides of it. Uh, then I go back to tweaking the age dry once again. As you can see, there's a lot of testing that goes with lighting. Obviously, this requires some uh, training of the eye. That way you are able to determine what needs to change. As you can see, I played around a lot with the exposure, with the highlights, the shadows, the white balance, and also the balance between the light that the HRI emits, but also the balance between the brightness that the actual background image actually emits. So as you can see, I'm gonna go back to the environment here and I'm just gonna test the temperature of the light that it emits and I made it a bit warmer. As you can see now, we are closer to the final render. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and hit render. However, there's this one final step that really makes a difference that I believe uh, most of you will not expect, which is the AI enhancer in D5. So, once I click on the AI enhancer, this basically just improves our image with just one click. It adds a lot of imperfections. After using the D5 enhancer, I also add another layer of Krea.ai enhancement, which is done online. And I download that image and then I put it on top of the D5 enhanced image in Photoshop. And basically I just make the blend mode to lighten, that way it is not as strong and as harsh. And it just makes a lot more sense in the final render. So as you can see, it just, in my eyes, honestly, it looks almost perfect. Um, I guess the glass could be a bit more visible and a bit more reflective, but overall, it looks great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you wanna see another full tutorial just like this, but for an interior, you can watch the video right here.